guys and welcome to this video on the two new items plus the patch 11.13 preview that's not a review that's a preview that means it's not out for another week i just want to clarify that just in case some of you guys think that it comes out or it's not it's not coming out for a week i'll do a full patch uh review after it they put out the actual patch notes these are review okay so these can all change all of these can change okay so they're adding two new items. Now, I just want everyone who comes here that I'm going to put this video out with minor editing because, you know, obviously, you know, just, just to be blunt and transparent, obviously this is a bit of a time sensitive sort of thing where everyone's gonna be putting out videos. So I wanna get mine out real quick. So there are any two new items, a split pushing item and another split pushing item. The first to go over is Anathema's Chains. This is the tank anti-split push item, although it's a little bit more diverse than that, so we'll get into that. It's got 650 HP, 20 ability haste, and you can choose a nemesis. Now, before we go into this, I want to specify that the nemesis takes 60 seconds to build. Kitty, you're just... Okay. Kitty. Just... Okay. Kitty. Okay. So... You can't flip this onto the last person in a team fight. You, you can't randomly find someone in the jungle and put it on them anything like that okay so this item over the course of 60 seconds gives an enemy 30 percent reduced damage to you and gives them 20 percent negative tenacity when they are near you now just to be clear here 20 percent negative tenacity that's a flat 20 percent so you can go from zero to negative 20 percent you can go from 30 percent to 10 percent so on like that okay I don't know how it stacks with multiplying tenacity, but whatever. So you can go into negative tenacity with this. This makes this item particularly devastating on champions like, for example, Malphite. Now, I'm pretty sure that negative tenacity does affect knockups. It works kind of funkily with Malphite, or sorry, not Malphite, with Orn, okay? I'm not entirely sure how it works, but we'll see, right? At the very least, this item looks more than just a, an anti-split push item. This item actually looks decent on support tanks to engage in and remove someone who's being a big issue. 30% reduced damage is a lot. That is a lot of reduced damage. That number might come down before release. That number might go down to 25 or even 20%. 30% reduced damage means... Okay, so to keep this in perspective, with 30% reduced damage, that means you will need 50% more damage to kill someone. So if it took me 3,000 damage to kill someone, now I will need 4,500. That's a lot of extra damage for people to find, okay? So from that perspective alone, it's a big deal. It's also a big deal because of champions that have shields, champions that have heals, someone like Scion, for example will be a real pain to deal with. Ignoring the negative tenacity, okay? So this item looks particularly good for a lot of reasons. This is a cheap item. It gives a lot of health, which tanks have been asking for. It gives a lot of ability haste. This seems to pretty much fill the role tanks want in being able to, for example, if I'm playing Scion, I can say, you know what, that Ophelios, He's been messing with me all game. No more. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this item, I'm going to be honest with you, this item looks a little bit overpowered. To be blunt, this item looks overpowered. Now, I don't think it'll launch like this, but if it does, uh, I see this working with a lot of builds and a lot of plays. Particularly, I see some tanks even putting this on their second item. It's pretty cheap. It gives a good glob of stats. I mean, to compare this to Warmogs, Warmogs is 400 gold more expensive for 150 more health, but for 20 less ability haste. Now, Warmogs also gives the out of combat healing. It also gives the health regen, but that's 400 more gold. And if you look just at the raw stats, Warmogs is 400 more gold. Now, that 400 gold that I'm saving on Anathema's chain, I can just buy Ruby Crystal and get 800 health anyway. <laughs> so, um, in addition to the glob of ability haste, this looks good. 
This looks good. This is a solid addition to tanks. Personal opinion, I think that tanks have needed an item with at the very least these stats, a glob of health and ability haste. Warmogs tries to fill that niche, but Warmogs' secondary effect is way, way, way niche. The out of combat healing and health regen are pretty niche stats. Let's be real with that one. It's not often that I'm in combat and then I think to myself, I want to get out of combat to then heal for 20 seconds to then get back in. I mean, when does that happen, right? The reduced tenacity, big deal. And I've got on with it. So this, this is a big deal item. Okay, I'll stop talking about it now. The, yeah, this this will be, in my opinion, if this goes to live unchanged. Don't quote me on this because this is, this, is, this is speculation hour. But I do believe if this goes to live unchanged that this will become a staple of tank lineups. The second item, oops, the second item is Hullbreaker. I can pop this over here. Hullbreaker. Now, this item has already been nerfed on the PBE. It used to be 400 HP. Now it's 300. So it's 50 damage, 300 HP, 150% health regen. Now, the boarding party. When you have no nearby allies. Unlike Serrated Dirk, which worked on only facing one enemy, this is allies, which is how Dirk should have worked in the first place. But anyway, if you have no nearby allies, if you're out there alone on the split push, you gain 20 to 45 armor based on level, 25 to 45, or say 20 to 45 magic resist based on level, 20% increased damage to turrets, large minions gain, I'm just going to say, a lot of armor and magic resist and deal double, sorry, deal 100%, so triple damage to turrets. This item definitely changes a lot as well. It's budgeted a bit cheaper than Sterex. Now, the health regen in my opinion, is good. The only issue is that Sterex also gives health regen from the 2% health whenever you deal damage or take damage, and that can add up because 2% on Sterex means if you have, let's say, 2,000 HP, that's 40 health. That adds up. You might notice if you have a Sterex and you're in a long split that it does actually kind of add up. Uh, if you take a bunch of mini skirmishers or trades or things like that, you'll notice you have a few hundred extra HP over the course of a split push. So this only about equals out to that. It's got less health than Sterex, same damage. So this seems to pretty much be the Nega Sterex. Instead of a teamfight item, you can go with a split push item in Hullbreaker. Now, in my opinion, this is a solid choice. It definitely has a bit of an interesting interaction once again with the increased damage of turrets on the minions. That means if you have Baron buff and you have the large siege minion doing its little, you know, cannon shot, that means that this item will make that hurt your turret really, really badly. And it'll also make that minion really tanky, so you can't just wipe it out real quickly. If a team can grab Baron with a split pusher with this item, and that would be difficult because it's hard to grab Baron when you can't 5v5, but if a team can grab Baron and a teammate can have this item while they grab Baron, that will be very impactful. <laughs> um, notably, I think the biggest issue is with super minions. This item is going to be kind of ridiculous. If I'm playing Aatrox or some other champion that can't kill super minions very easily, this item is seriously going to make those super minions practically unkillable and beat the crap out of turrets. Uh, there's some hard implications here. The 20% increased damage to turrets is okay. I mean, it, it's okay. I'm going to kind of ignore it. The armor and magic resist is good. The health is good. Uh, the biggest question is, will this item outperform another item and that's kind of where the question begins, because this isn't the only item that's good on a split push, okay? Just to be clear, this is not the only... This, it's not like, just because this item says it's a split push item doesn't mean it is better than everything else on the split push, okay? This item would very likely still lose to Blade of the Rune King. If it came down to it, if there's a Jax versus a Jax, and one had Blade of the Rune King, and one had this item, Blade of the Rune King Jax is likely going to take the fight. There's also item like Wit's End... Titanic Hydra, items like that, okay? So, this item looks 
they call it Hullbreaker, and it looks like it's mostly about basically ramming it down a turret. Basically being able to force a turret to die, either because you have an open super minion wave, or something like that. I think it looks good, but... I think that it's being I think it's being a little bit overrated by the community. It mostly looks good on champions like Aatrox that can't kill turrets on their own. Because even if you're looking at the increased damage in turrets, let's say I'm playing Fiora, if I go Stridebreaker Essence Reaver, right? That Essence Reaver is gonna do more damage to a turret than Holebreaker would add, right? If I'm playing Jax, then a Titanic Hydra would do more damage to turrets than Holebreaker. So, it's mostly about buffing up that super minion and making yourself a little bit tankier. I think it's good. I think it'll be built. Unlike Anathema's Chains, though, this item is good in team fights. even. I mean, you slot this on the Fed 80 carry, that's a really big deal, right? If you're playing Maokai or something, and they've got a Fed, I don't know, Silas, the ability to just keep ramming your ass into Silas and chasing him around with your ass, right? That's a good deal because he can't exactly turn and fight you because you're just taking such reduced damage your your team will kill him before he kills you which gives you the capability of being able to just chase him around with your ass and just keep sitting on him as he kind of just goes oh come on this item does nothing in a team fight i mean i guess it gives base stats but you know basically nothing and I'm not sure it will, by default, outperform other items on the split push. So, this item I think is going to change a game. This item I think is going to change a game. This item I think will be good and built. So far as he changes... In patch 11.13, Divine Sunder is being nerfed on range. That means obvious, Ezreal and Senna were very overpowered with it. AP items are getting their cost reduced. I guess this is to try to let them complete their items a little bit faster, because, yeah, whatever. Um, uh, Moonstone Renewer is getting a little bit of a buff again. This is notable because they're nerfing Shrillias really hard over here. And I, I made a video on the mobility changes, so go look at that, okay? So they're trying to push Moonstone Renewer, and they're nerfing Shrillias, so we'll probably see a shift back to Moonstone. Ghost Poro got buffed, but, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's not really an important rune. It's nice that they're buffing some of the weaker runes, I'll tell you that much. So far as changes to the mobility creep things, okay, you can go look at my video. You can go look at my video. Other than the video, though, the changes I've done since then, Stridebreaker's damage has been reduced from the 150% it was originally to 100% AD, and it lost 5 damage. That does make it a lot weaker, and that does kind of change my opinion on it, because... It now gives less damage than Gore Drinker by default. Even though Gore Drinker is up to 50% damage, they both had 45 default. Now it's giving less damage, and the active does less damage. So this no longer looks like Stride Drinker. This is starting to look different. Obviously, they couldn't keep it that damaging because AD Assassins would just build it and run people down. But I think now they're running into the issue where they've nerfed it so hard for practically only a little, it's, it's got a slow and it's got more health now, and that's it. And I, I, I'm starting to change my opinion. I thought originally it was going to be very good, but those nerves, mm, they still haven't gone ahead and buffed a stance. So it's not really an adjustment. That's it, you know. So far as these changes, now these can change before live. Again, I want to just specify that. Ribbon is losing shield by 15. Not really the most impactful change. In my opinion, most champions can't hit Riven through her shield anyway. So her shield is still going to full block whatever attack she blocks with it. I think it'll impact some things for sure. But overall, I don't think this is the nerf she needed. She still scales out of control way too easily. So nerfing her early game a little bit, I don't think isn't what she needed. Lee Sin's losing 40 damage on his max rank E, which should surprise nobody. When I'm starting to take 40% magic damage from Lee Sin, I'm starting to think to myself, hmm, hmm, Riot, what's going on here? You have really screwed up, haven't you? Rumble's W is losing movement speed and going up on cooldown at rank 1. So Riot is continuing to nerf Rumble rather than addressing the fact 
that if he touches you and overheat, you die from full. In other words, Riot is saying, it is totally okay for Rimmel to one-shot you, we just don't want him to reach you as easily. As anyone could understand, this is dumb. I just don't understand why Riot continuously insists that every single champion must be a one-shot champion. Why? They're delaying the Dr. Mundo jungle because he's very overpowered top lane. This surprises me, because Riot has never delayed buffing the jungle of a champion who's already overpowered in top lane. Can you imagine them doing that? Not me. I thought they would just buff his jungle, which would make his top lane better. But they're actually apparently learning or something? I'm not sure. So I was getting some buffs on her Q. Um, I think she maxes it last, but it's going up to 300 damage, because it hits twice, up to 300 damage. Damn. 100 base, damn. That feels like a lot. Aphelios, okay, now I know most of you have never read the encyclopedia of knowledge that is Aphelios. When he levels up, he can put stats into his passive and then he gets stronger. Yeah, basically his damage and lethality per level. I'm going to call it per level. You, you, a fellow means who've read all this, you're gonna, you're gonna jump at me and you're gonna say, a Shinji, and it's technically not per level. Technically, you get points and then you put them into them, so it's not per no, 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 okay. So his damage and lethality per level went up. That's about it. Olaf gained more health per level. The Olaf change, I'm not too happy with. It's a good change, but it's not exactly what he needed. Olaf is performing very poorly because they nerfed him and then they nerfed Gore Drinker. I know what you're thinking. Wow. They nerfed the champion, then nerfed the item that was making them overpowered? I've never heard of Riot doing that before. Ever. Well, they did it. Again. Personal opinion? Olaf could probably use... something somewhere. Viego's getting his lane nerfed. Uh, solo lane Viego's basically dead, but hey, in return... Jungle Viego's getting buffed wait what anyway and that's it and then tom kench is getting his rework but uh, i'll probably do a video on that later so that's this video thank you all for watching and thank you all for getting through all of it appreciate you all thank you everybody thank you special thank you to my patreon supporters now remember the patreon supporters are why these videos get made i appreciate you all a lot you're all wonderful please join my patreon thank you